Welcome back to Mastering Thought, here with Dr. Mark Waller, me, Christina Black, and our special guest today, David Feldman. David Feldman is a licensed marriage and family therapist and has been practicing for 10 years and has created a program called Recreating Intimacy. It's a 12-week program. He runs with his wife and they help couples um, from the comfort of their own home to strengthen their marriage. So thanks for coming on today. Yes, of course. It's my privilege and my pleasure. So let me just uh, say a, an introductory thought or two. Um, David and I connected on the internet, and uh, when he when we approached one another about him being a guest on on uh, the show, um, it's very interesting because we're very different. We come from different places. We have different uh, approaches. Uh, but right away, and, and maybe you can confirm this, David, that we found very simil similar philosophies to what we're doing and where we're coming from. Very yeah, traditional, yes. same values. And uh, I got really excited at that point that he brought a dimension to this discussion that I hadn't had before. So welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. And I think our number one similarity is that we're both pro marriage, which is very important if you want to be a marriage counselor. <laughs> right. right. You know, in 24 years, I have never, ever told a couple they needed to get divorced. It's incredible. Absolutely. And you'd be surprised how many therapists say that, you know. Oh, totally. I, a lot, mm -hmm. Many times people that come to me are coming to me after they've been you know, many people, when they first look for a therapist, they'll open up the yellow pages or their local, you know, uh, insurance directory, mm -hmm. or maybe they'll go to goodtherapy.com and, and, you know, s seek out a therapist there. And um, it's astounding how many therapists are quick to pull the trigger on this isn't a right fit, and it looks like it's time to separate and, you know, red flags and very little regard for the sanctity of marriage and the importance of working out your differences, almost as if there was an assumption that marriage shouldn't be challenging. <laughs> so we were discussing some things and, and um, uh, Christina referred to your program. So if you could tell us a little bit about the program and the steps in the program, I'd, I'd be interested in that. Sure, sure. And the name of the program is very important. It sets the tone for the entire uh, approach that we're going to take, which is called recreating intimacy. So I'm very particular not to say things like creating intimacy or mm -hmm. um, learning how to love each other or falling in love with your partner, because my foundational you know, approach to relationships, specifically marriage, is that love and intimacy and connection and appreciation and respect for each other is already there. And all I'm doing as a therapist is helping this couple, um, you know, due to the pressures of life and perhaps some deeper topics that I know, Mark, you're a specialist in, perhaps some deeper issues of family of origin or psychodynamics, the feelings that they have for each other have been lost or eroded or mm -hmm. buried. And my whole program is designed to, all it's doing is bringing back the natural love and connection that they have for each other. So that's my foundation. I think, Mark, you agree with that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, it's, it's like the two people who met and fell in love are still there, but they've gotten busy doing other things. <laughs> totally, totally, mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's really what I focus on. And, and we can talk about, you know, there's five major steps that I um, work with the couples on. Five, five, I call them the five foundations of marriage. But even just in our opening session when we kind of frame their relationships problems within this paradigm that the love is already there and all I'm doing is bringing it out. It so often brings so much relief, you know, to the husband and the wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're seeing me for the most part, that means that they want this to work out. 
And mm-hmm. if that's the case, that means that they still care about each other and love each other. And they just have lost, you know, their way, so to speak. And uh, I'm a strong believer that, you know, I, I say all the time, marriage is more about what you do than how you feel. Mm-hmm. And when we, when we work with clients and we teach them some of the foundations of what a good marriage entails, it's astounding <laughs> how quickly mm-hmm. couples can come back together in a beautiful way. Mm-hmm. So what are those five steps? Sure, sure. So I call these the five foundations of marriage, and that encompasses uh, the first one, which which takes us through the entire program and is the bedrock of the entire program. And ideally, their entire lives together is appreciation, gratitude, and kindness. This is the first foundation that, you know, missing this in your relationship, nothing else is going to help. I mean, if you can't look at your wife and think to yourself that you're so blessed to have her as a partner, it doesn't matter how which technique you use for communication, you're going to, um, you're going to be trapped in negativity. So the first thing we do is we realign the couple with the reasons why they love each other. And it's, it's an amazing exercise that I do with them. It mm-hmm. could be on the first session or the second session where I will ask, let's just say I ask the wife, now this is a woman who, after the first session, you know, maybe during our, my initial clarity call, she's, she's crying to me about how awful her marriage and her husband is. Then we go through the second call where she continues to cry <laughs> for, <laughs> for 45 mm-hmm. minutes to an hour about how terrible her husband is, you know, mm-hmm. she's sad and she's hurt, mm-hmm. you know, and then it may be on the, on the, on the, on the third time I'm speaking with her, I throw a curveball and I say, well, you know, give me, if I were to ask you the top five reasons why you love your husband and why he's worthy of appreciation, it's almost like a shock because Mm -hmm. that's not really why she's coming to me. She's coming to me to validate her reasons for being angry, to perhaps Mm -hmm. hear her out, which I did, you know, there's a limit, as you know, as therapists, we can't go on forever just listening to our clients complain. Um, but it, it's a real shocker, you know, for them. And they, and they, it kind of like turns the table, but I can promise you that at the end of that, that, um, exercise, I usually have to help them with the first three or four just to get the ball rolling. But once I start, we usually end up with 20 to 30 beautiful statements that she's made about her husband that she was completely out of touch with totally out of touch with and i mm-hmm. i'll read them back mm-hmm. to them and i always tell her i say thank you for this list because i'm going to hold this against you for the rest of the program <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious and, and what i do is i i'll take that list at some point during our program together and first of all this list forms the foundation of her appreciation uh, exercises that she's going to be doing um throughout the program but very significantly i'll take this program and i'll send i'll message it i don't say anything to her but i'll take this i'll take this list and i'll message it to her husband privately and i'll say i just want you to know this is what your wife feels about you and this is who she thinks you are wow. and it's like uh, yeah it's a, it's incredible i mean the men, and this goes totally both ways. I just happen to be using the woman in this example. It's mm-hmm. exactly the same way the other way around. I'll get responses from the partner who received this list and say, I haven't heard those things and I haven't felt those things in years. Right. I had no idea that this is who she thinks I am. Right. So it's like, I feel, you know, again, that's why I said to you originally, we believe in marriage. It's like, Oftentimes people just need a positive light to be shined on their marriage and their relationship. And Mm -hmm. that alone, you know, solves so many of the problems, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's just my first, you know, the rest after that kind of is a lot easier because once we start working on this appreciation for both of them and they're both 
they're both sharing their appreciations, not just with me, but with each, they start, I have these exercises where they have to text each other and write to each other daily appreciations. And it could be based off this list yeah. as an example. And once that goodwill starts flowing, the rest of the program kind of, you know, it just kind of like, it's easy street mm -hmm. from there. It's like, it's like rolling a ball down a hill, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take much. But just for the record, you know, the other modules that I speak about are communication. So how to e effectively express your thoughts and your feelings without criticism, blame, anger, you know, def you know, uh, you know, in a way that your partner can hear. So that's the second module. Mm -hmm. And then, the, you know, which is every therapist does that to some extent or another. I have my own methodology, which I think is very unique and very special, but they're all good. I mean, I, I always say to people, if, if you want to learn how to speak to your husband and you're, if you're confused, just go to Google and just say, how do I talk to my husband without criticizing? <laughs> I mean, how hard is that, right? You might not get the best advice in the world, but you're going to get something pretty good, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the third module is about listening, right? How do, we, how do we create a space for our partner where they can share their feelings without us getting so defensive? Mm -hmm. And how do we honor our partner's experience without us taking it in a way that um, causes us massive distress? Because that, and, and I find that to be one of the biggest challenges for most people, myself included. You know, mm -hmm. it's easy to listen to a friend complain about work, or it's mm -hmm. easy to listen to a parent complain about, you know, some experience they had with a customer service agent. And it's easy for us to show empathy and sympathy, and but it's really hard for us to hear <laughs> anybody say something about us, let alone mm -hmm. our spouse. Right. So why is that? And what can we do about that? How do we become good listeners? Mm -hmm. so that's the third thing. And then the fourth point is boundaries. Now, this is a very interesting and very important topic. And um, I find that many relationships suffer from not being able to set boundaries properly mm -hmm. and not understanding the true purpose of a boundary and and oftentimes we set boundaries and what we do in the process of setting but first of all for many people they don't know how to set boundaries at all like they just mm -hmm. either they're so concerned about their partner's feelings or they're overly strict on their boundaries hey you know thanks for calling but i can't you know i can't speak to you at work you know, like that would be very off-putting off for somebody, you know, or, you know, um, you know, I, I can't you coming, you know, you want me to come home on time for dinner? And then I, I say, well, you know, it's just not going to happen. You know, there's so many opportunities for us. There's so many times where we set boundaries, you know, but we do so in a way that pushes away our partner. And the reality is that boundaries the whole purpose of a boundaries is to bring us closer together mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it right if i hand you a bouquet of flowers that feels a lot more connecting than me saying hey i can no longer do this for you or i don't appreciate when you do that that doesn't feel good <laughs> mm -hmm. but the reason why i'm saying i can no longer do this for you or i can't be spoken to in this way or something like that is because i love you and I want our relationship to work. And if this behavior continues, we're going to separate. And I don't want that. So we need to convey that when we're setting boundaries instead of just cutting off our partner. Okay. And then the last one is sex, right? So, um, you know, Mark, you look like a, a you know, obviously you're, you're a more mature person. And as a more <laughs> mature person, <laughs> we understand that it may be easier in the beginning parts of marriage to have a healthy sex life, but how do we mm -hmm. take that with us to our forties, fifties, and sixties? How do we, how do we create a dynamic in the bedroom that's going to last, that's going to go the distance? So these are the five foundations and I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of these or, you know, what, you know, if, if there's any overlap in the way you work with clients. So, um, Christina, do you have a, a question before I 
I did have one. I wanted to see, um, David, what you think, like how you're using the word gratitude alongside with appreciation as two of the three principles. How would you describe what gratitude's supposed to mean in your system? Sure, sure. So to me, um, you know, an appreciation is I see something in you and a gratitude is that thing which I see causes me to feel um, a certain way, a certain positive mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So, okay. now that, yeah, and, and that's very, very, very important because a lot of times clients get confused, but they say to me, well, I'm always saying thank you. Mm -hmm. and, I, and and that's true. It's great. No, I always say thank you for things. I just said thank you the other day. You know, he, my husband uh, went shopping for, you know, did my shopping run that I was supposed to do. And I said, thank you. So I explained to my clients, I say, that's beautiful. And your life should be full of thank yous. You should always say thank you. And you should always receive thank yous. Keep it going. But that's mm -hmm. in my book, that's not appreciation. That's a thank you. So an mm -hmm. appreciation is the combination of noticing something that your spouse did or a character trait, mm -hmm. expressing it, and then this is the key factor, connecting it to a feeling. And that's the most important, that's one of the most important parts. A thank you doesn't connect it to a feeling. Mm -hmm. So if your husband, for instance, I'll give you an example. If your husband, if you and your husband agree that you were supposed to take the kids to school today and he does so for you as an example, just millions of examples. So you could say thank you, but you could also say it meant so much to me that when I was tied up with work and couldn't take the kids to school that you stepped in and covered for me, I feel so supported. Mm. That's it. You it's know what I alone. find is is oftentimes people are thinking that, but they forget to express it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they just think, "Well, that's implied." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, that's a big mistake. <laughs> totally, and it's a big mistake not just for the recipient. See, my foundational understanding of gratitudes and my my approach is: I always tell the people that I'm working with, the gratitude is actually more for you than it is for your mm. partner. It feels good to your partner. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you know, he was mean to me, so I don't want to express gratitude about anything. And I say, well, well <laughs> you're not hurting him. <laughs> you're hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're taking yourself out of the mode, which, which is what I talked about earlier, the recreating intimacy mode. You're moving yourself out of that mode. When you right. express gratitude, you're revealing to yourself and enforcing and emphasizing for yourself the value of this person in your life. Mm -hmm. So did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> sure. So take me back to the, the question you asked me a minute ago, Dovid. Which was, please remind me. I... Well, you went through the five things and you asked, I think you asked me how that fit into kind of the way I work with people. Yes, yes. I'd love to hear, you know, do you find that these five foundations are issues that come up with the way you work? I know when we talk privately, you kind of have like a different approach, even though value-wise we're on the same page, but mine's very behavioral, and I was interested to hear more about how you approach mm -hmm. these types okay, of things. Okay, well, mine's totally based on insight. Okay. And and so if if you're not expressing, see, my my position would be if you're not expressing gratitude, what are you doing instead? Uh -huh. And where does that actually come from? Right. And my focus mm -hmm. is very much on how early childhood emotional development carries over into the marriage and the marriage becomes a th the theater for the early childhood strategies uh -huh. that keep getting repeated over and over and over again. That, that's why I was interested when you um, mentioned on your website about resolving the past. That's that's my whole emphasis is you don't see what you're doing that is about the past right now. And until you can see that, you're not free to be actually present in the in the present moment. That's that's great. And, and like I believe I mentioned to you on the phone call, 
I do feel like, you know, that's an important aspect to bring into the dynamic for sure. And I, I definitely appreciate the fact that you do that and your approach about that for sure. So the, the thing that I find is that when people are communicating, a lot of times what they're doing is they're trying to deliver a message to their mother or their father, and they don't realize that they're actually standing in front of their husband. There's a whole part of their brain that is still wrestling with that dynamic in the moment. They're trying to communicate to this other person, but they don't realize that's what they're doing. Right. And so right. he's trying to say something to her in an emotional language that he doesn't even realize that it, that he's using, that's the, the residual from his past, and she's responding to it as if it fits her model of what that communication should be based on her past experience, and they're just, it's just... Right. You know, that must be very eye-opening for the clients when they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when they say, hey, wow, I've been treating you like my dad the entire time. <laughs> exactly. That's a, and, and it's... Yeah, it's an aha moment when they see it that completely sets them free. And then then the, in, in my, you know, the way I work, now they're willing to talk about some of these things. Mm -hmm. Because now they understand actually what the topic is instead of the unresolved problems they brought with them from their early emotional development. Right, right. How, how, how long does it take you to... I've always looked at that work as very, very powerful and deep. And as a marriage therapist, I, I always get concerned that um, there's a fire going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out the difference between a, you know, a, a phosphorus match and a big lighter. And meanwhile, the, the house is burning. So I get concerned that <laughs> I dive into that and I lose the I lose the energy between them or they can get lost in that. But you seem to have gotten a good technique down where it does have successful results, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I managed about 20 years ago to stumble upon a way of explaining this in a model that just completely blows people away in the, in the first session. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christina can, can kind of attest to her experience with this. When they mm -hmm. see it presented to them, they know they're in a cycle. They know there's something going on and they know they're repeating it. And when you show it to them and you're able to tell them where it's coming from in the first session, they're just like, that's exactly what's happening. Wow. And now I've got them. Mm -hmm. And we just Incredible. go deeper into that, into that, you know, and it's basically the way their brain is working. So mm -hmm. it's not about pointing fingers. It's okay. This is the way you were programmed and this is what's happening. And it's amazing to me because, um, and I don't want to get too far off the topic into my stuff, but um, for men particularly, uh, I've, I've found that about half of us are fear-based and the other half of us are shame-based. Uh -huh. And what's, what's really interesting is you would think you've got this great big man there who's, you know, he's a diesel mechanic. And when I go through this and I explain his motives, his act, the actual emotion he's feeling is fear. And you would think this guy'd come out of his chair and say, oh my God, I'm not feeling fear. I'm in this great big guy. That's actually not what happens. As soon as I say that, they say, that's exactly the way I feel. Mm -hmm. Wow. And their wife who's been with them for 15 years is looking at me, he's feeling fear. Are you kidding me? You know, he's six right. foot three and he, he can, he can hold a car engine up with one hand, you know, where's the fear? <laughs> and so it yeah, completely yeah, changes also, their perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. And it, he probably doesn't in her eyes, he probably never shows up as fearful because no. he probably puts immediately a coat of, you know, masculinity mm -hmm. or bravado or a shield up, mm -hmm. which doesn't give her insight into the fact that, you know, when she points something out or when she, um, Mm -hmm. expresses a thought or a feeling he's actually responding from that little boy wound instead of that, the big man that's exactly persona. right and yeah. when they see that that that's exactly what happens now i I'm, i gotta tell you in my experience is there's a lot of people that respond really well to this approach but i also think that there's people i cannot reach who would respond better to your approach <laughs> 
I think a nice combination of the two would be terrific because <laughs> as I mentioned to you, you know, I do as, as much as my approach really brings people together pretty quickly, I do feel that, um, and, and then we can talk about this too. You know, I don't know in your situation, it, it feels to me as if the days of, this is just my experience. Now I've only been doing this for about 10 years. But it feels to me as if the days of people kind of getting 24 to 36 sessions with their therapist paid by their insurance and they go every week and they just mm -hmm. talk for an hour. Uh, something in, in me is telling me that those days are a little bit past, right. not just from the insurance model, but also from the expect, you know, we live in a society where people want results ASAP. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm, sometimes I feel like if I don't, fix so to speak or help them help them fix their relationship quickly they're gonna just feel like they're you know they're not getting what they what they came for mm -hmm. well, i really appreciate what you're saying because i feel a responsibility if i'm not making progress in three or four sessions and if the light is not going on then then i'm not doing and I tell him, I said, there's a nicer therapist. You know, you can call and get a nice therapist. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the nice therapist wants to do 20 or 30 sessions. <laughs> but yeah, I agree know, with here's, that. Here's what's happening, and we can get this done in, you know, less, probably less than 10 sessions if you really work on it. Wow. That's incredible. And it seems to me like your approach also kind of gives them, you know, my approach is going to give them at least what I do, you know, even when I get contacted by clients a year later and they sign up for like another, either another recreating intimacy program, because I do have clients that come once a year and just, mm -hmm. you know, just to, you know, keep their marriage in gear. But um, I, I feel like my approach will kind of give them that behavioral standard, you know, because I'll just say to them, hey, when you spoke to your wife, did you use our communication methodology? And, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we'll even be in session together and I'll allow the husband to say something to his wife and I'll stop him after he finished and I'll say, okay, now go back and say it again, but using the communication techniques that you've learned from our time together. And it's incredible the difference in her response, of course. Right. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just, it's eye opening to him as well in the sense that um, he has so much control. You know, how many times have you heard, how many times have I heard, well, no matter how I say it, you know, right. it never gets through. And I'm like, hmm, let me hear exactly what you said. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, if you keep on using the word jerk in what you're yeah. saying, it's probably mm -hmm. not going to go over as well as you'd like. <laughs> right. So, so before we go on too far here, you had brought up some, some topics um, while we were waiting to get started today that I thought were fascinating. And I, I wanted to kind of get on to some of those too, uh, if, if we're ready to, to, uh, to sure. move on. I really appreciate your approach though. It brings a dimension to this that that uh, I think we're, we really need to talk about. And I, I really, mm. uh, by the way, I don't know if you express this or not, but but before we leave this topic, talk about the fact that you see the 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 couple separately, which oh, I yeah. absolutely respect. Oh, cool, cool, yeah, yeah. So years ago, when as a regular adult male, I was not treating my wife as well as I should have. <laughs> so I found myself in therapy as well. And um, which really kind of launched my whole journey to becoming a marriage therapist. Because I just looked at this therapist and I said, you know, I, I really, after, after, you know, weeks and months of fighting with my wife in front of this therapist, I just looked at this therapist and I said, you know, I think I can do this better than you, you know. And that's when I kind of went to therapy school and got my degree and my license. But one thing I said to myself at the time was that I never put an angry lion and a hungry tiger in the same room and just to see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's just not, it was just not something I was willing to do. So my whole program 
especially in the beginning parts when there there is no goodwill or there's so much angst and resentment mm -hmm. and failure and negativity um i i decided that the first you know the that the majority of the sessions that i work with them are going to be individual one-on-one -on -one sessions takes and, that element out of it oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. and it's a, it's amazing you know the the progress that you can make because right. people can be honest with you and they can really tell you what's going on things mm -hmm. that they would never say to their partner in front of them thank god mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah. um mm -hmm. and uh and it's like i can I can feel that fear, concern, that resentment, that anger. I can work with them on that so that it's never forward facing to their spouse, which could cause such irreparable damage. And um, that was really, really important to me. We do have joint sessions in the program, so we do get together. But even those are relatively scripted, to be honest. Okay. I, if if there's something that let's just say the wife wants to bring up something that her husband said to her five years ago in some cases 20 years ago right. um, <laughs> she lets me know what that is first so i ask her you know in our in our private session say okay, we're gonna have a joint session this is your opportunity to bring up something that's been paining you that's been hurting you for as long as it you know any resentment that you're holding on to Will you let me know what it is that you want to talk about? So she'll say, you know, 15 years ago, after we had our first baby, we got into a big fight and my husband threatened to leave me. So I'm like, right. okay, that's a biggie. All right. And she says, I've, I've been sitting with that pain this whole time. And every time I look at him, I can't get rid of that fear that he's got one foot out the door. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So... I'll talk with her about that a little bit and I'll say, okay, now's your chance. We'll use the communication methodology and you'll share with him your concerns, but I don't leave it at that. I will then contact the husband and let him know that this topic is on the table and I will get buy-in from him that he can hear it, own it and take responsibility for whatever he can regarding that situation. Mm -hmm. And when they both agree, that's, that's when I kind of, allow a topic like this to come up in the session mm -hmm. so that we can actually get real resolution and i have to be honest with you sometimes they've tried to talk about this they've argued about it you know well you told me this and you told me that and and it's like this may be the first time that this woman for 15 years is actually able to express her feelings to her husband and for him to look at her and say i'm really sorry that i made you feel that way i never meant that you know, can you mm. forgive me? You know, and it's it's fantastic. Let me, let me, before I pass it over to uh, Christina, let me just make a comment about individual sessions. For me, the reason why they're so powerful is the trigger is not there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm talking to the husband, the, the wife is not there to trigger him. So he's not on guard. If I'm talking yeah. to the wife, the trigger is not there. And I right. can hold people accountable without them getting defensive when the other party is not in the room. Oh, yeah, very good point. Nothing worse than getting embarrassed by your therapist for your bad behavior in front of your spouse, well, who will then use and, it as a weapon for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, and we can get to a level of honesty that is not, to me, is not possible when the three of us are in the room. Yeah. Now, okay. once we have an understanding of what's really going on and the kind of the direction, it's not a problem, but uh, you know, if I really want to drill down and get somebody to see what's going on, they're not going to do that because they're they're sitting in that s joint session measuring what's what's happening in the session oh, yeah. mm -hmm. totally. instead of what's happening inside of themselves. Oh, mm -hmm. completely. Yeah, there's no authenticity there because they're no. just playing defense the whole time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go ahead, Christina. Oh, I was just thinking it's so nice that you have a relationship with both the partners that you can uh, talk about, you know, whatever grievances, but then also be able to connect with the other spouse and let them know that and give them the opportunity to say, no, I can't or yeah, let's take on that topic. It's just 
uh, it's a really beautiful system that you created. I Thank really you. appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it, and it is nice because everybody feels, you know, look, I have to be honest, I've lost couples, you know, I've lost couples because there, there's always the time when, you know, one of them thinks I'm siding with the other more right. than that or something like that, that happens, you know, right. but it's, it's much rarer in this mm -hmm. case, because when I'm meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, they, I try my best and I, I really make an effort and it's sincere that like, when I'm speaking with the wife, I'm on team wife and she knows that mm -hmm. I tell her that I'm like, first of all, I always say I'm on team marriage. That's the first thing I say. I'm, <laughs> I'm your marriage's biggest advocate. Um, but, but when I speak with her, I'm like, I'm on your team. I get why you're hurt. Mm -hmm. I understand why you're upset at him. And yeah, you know, that wasn't cool. What happened? I can understand mm -hmm. why you're upset. And when I speak with him, and this is, and this mark has to do with what we talked about before, why oftentimes men shy away from therapy because they don't feel hurt. And when I'm speaking to him, I, especially as a man, I just like, oh yeah, that sucked. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. I can't believe she said that. You know, mm -hmm. and like it's like maybe the first time they feel validated that you know, and I, and I wouldn't, by the way, I wouldn't be able to say that in front if she was sitting in the right. room. I couldn't because I would risk losing her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it just gives me the freedom to have a real authentic relationship with both of them. Mm -hmm. So one of my rules when we start is we're not going to talk about the drama. Oh, okay. I'm not a drama coach. Uh huh. I'm interested well, in what would you call drama? Uh, just, just the, uh, he said, she said, arguing, uh -huh. you know, back and forth. And my, my attitude is okay great we're going to do this every week and what you're going to find is that you're actually telling the same story over and over again mm -hmm. so there's something going on underneath here that's being repeated and so we can either stay at this level the level of the drama or we can drop down and see what's really happening here from an emotional standpoint and you'll see that the pattern keeps repeating itself uh -huh. it's a it's a different circumstance but, you know, one day it's at the store and the next day it's the checkbook and the next day it's the kids. But the pattern is the same over and over again. Wow. That sounds terrific. I mean, it <laughs> sounds like a very deep healing, which is really incredible. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, it's transformational. Mm -hmm. and, I, and actually, before I, we go to the next topic, my emphasis is once I establish what, what the what the uh, pattern is and they buy in. Yes, that's our pattern. I can see where that comes from. Then what I do is move to training them um, to, to understand that they're not the voice in their head mm -hmm. because the voice in your head that sounds like you talking to you is not you, but it carries the message from this baggage that we have and it interferes with our perception over and over and over again. Mm. I think my wife and I need a session with you. <laughs> Actually, well, it's, I it's can very, recommend it. <laughs> it's very revolutionary, and when people catch on, and I mean, I have a, I, you know, I've worked on this for so many years. I have a way of showing people that they're not the voice, and it's unmistakable. And when they realize, oh my God, I've been talking to myself about this stuff all these years, and none of it's true. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's very deep. That's very deep. I did some work like that on myself as a person, uh, probably about 10 years ago as well. Uh -huh. Um, which is interesting because I think most people kind of, I always, I have my own development, like I have a call with like, what's called like a marriage developmental cycle. So it's mm. like, you know, um, and right around the ages of 40 years old, uh, usually women hit it first. So, uh, the woman will be around 40, the men will be around 42, 43, you know, the S hits the fan and <laughs> everyone wakes up from their, you know, dream uh, and they have to start reevaluating themselves and their marriage and like what they're, who they are as a person. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I did that for myself and I kind of work with my clients, especially I get middle-aged couples. And I'm always like, you're exactly on schedule. Like I'm not surprised <laughs> that you're going through this at all. This is perfect. Don't be afraid. This is exactly the way it works. Mm -hmm. and, 
you are going to be a different person and your marriage is going to be different. And this is a better part of life if you go through this well. And, I'm, and I think your work is definitely in line with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a we have a lot in common underneath what we're what we're both attempting to do. Mm-hmm. So what were what were a couple of the other com, uh, topics you were alluding sure. to earlier? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, you know, these are the these are some of them. You know, I thought um, we could talk about how does counseling work, like effectiveness. You know, how would you say? You know, that, that's one thing. Another topic would be dating versus marriage. You know, I, I know you and I are on the marriage side, but I'm, I'm assuming that you have some insight into, you know, younger people or even older people dating, you know, um, and also just a, an overall topic of, you know, the state of marriage today. You know, how does that, mm-hmm. I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos about marriage and most of them aren't good, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, many people are so despondent and depressed about marriage and the, the outcomes of marriage. And mm-hmm. it seems like we're going on regarding it. Do you have any question about that, Christina, before I comment on that? I don't think so. Okay. I, so, Christina, from your perspective, like, do you see that marriage is under attack or you kind of surround yourself with people who are happily married and they encourage uh, it? And... I mean, I, uh, of all our friends and extended friends, it, there's definitely people in both camps. Um, I think it gets tricky to balance when to, how do I put it? Like, it's very easy to get selfish with the culture we have right now and to just do what works for you. And this is my truth. And I think there's a space for that where it's healthy. And then I think there's we need boundaries around that as well. Um, And so it can be easy to get lost in the weeds when you don't have good boundaries about when to think about your interests first to make sure your cup's full so you have something to pour into others. So Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, you touched on what I was going to say, Christina, because <laughs> I think, I, I think that we, in the previous generations, there was no question what you had to do. And, mm-hmm. and, um, you didn't, you didn't have a choice, but to fulfill a role. Mm-hmm. So you didn't allow yourself to think about what other possibilities were particularly. It was just not done. And so, right. so, but in our world that we live in now, we have options. And mm-hmm. so because we have options, it's allowed us to think about, you know, what we'd rather have than what we have. And, mm-hmm. and so in, as a result of that, mm-hmm. things that we struggle with rise more to the surface than they would have in the, in the rigid days of old. I mean, mm-hmm. back you know, back pre World War II, you're a husband, you're a father, you're a man, you're a mother, you know, wh- whatever. You fulfilled those roles, no matter how you felt about it. And you were just you mm-hmm. were doomed, and you didn't look at your options particularly. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but it just was a very myopic view mm-hmm. of life and how and what our roles were. In, in the current environment we have the freedom to explore other options in our thinking. And as a result of that, I think that kind of opens up Pandora's box and all the things we've been suppressing and, and we normally would not allow ourselves to struggle with or emerge then. And they merge right into the marriage. And, um, you know, yeah, you've got, I agree. I kind of feel one thing that I always say, especially online, um, I always point out that, and this is a, a somewhat of a controversial take, you know, I, I believe the definition of marriage itself has shifted um, from one, like you said, Mark, which was more rigid understanding, whether you were a religious person or not, it was just, I think it was a massive overlap, traditional roles and religion were has mm-hmm. good, almost a one-to-one correlation. And right. today there's almost no definitions of marriage. Right. And something which I always tell people is that marriage, by its very definition, is a traditional structure. 
Mm-hmm. It, it's a traditional institution that that's the mm-hmm. definition of marriage. And if you don't want to p- play by its rules, you're not going to get the outcomes that you expect. Mm-hmm. And that's a mm-hmm. tough pill to swallow for many people. You know, people come with all these different, like, like, um, all these different expectations and mindsets and approaches and philosophies about marriage, whether it's, you know, open marriage or, you know, polygamous marriage or, um, you know, uh, serial monogamy or that divorce is just another step in the marriage life. <laughs> you know, it's very different, you know, philosophies about marriage or even, even, even the mixing up of gender roles to a large extent. Um, and then, and then the marriage, oftentimes the marriage doesn't work out or they're experiencing difficulties. And, it, you know, in my perspective, it's like, if you're not going to play by the rules of the game, you're not going to get the success that you were probably hoping for when you went into it. Mm. Well, I think one, one of the things that, that I think is important and that I tell people all the time is the purpose of a relationship is to make you conscious, not happy. Mm. And that, that's kind of a shocking statement, I know, but, but everything that comes up in your emotional you know, reactions in the relationship is an opportunity for you to go deeper and find out what your unfinished business is and what you need to be working on. Mm-hmm. And ironically, I believe that we're in a relationship with exactly the right person who's going to bring that up so we can see it. Mm-hmm. And so when people come to me, should I stay or should I go? My answer is, have you learned what you're supposed to learn? Mm-hmm. And you, no, you know, you better not leave until you've learned what that is, because you're going, you're doomed to repeat that pattern in the next relationship because you're carrying it inside of you. Very good point, you know, and that oftentimes helps people frame that decision a little bit better, you know. Right. I what I'll what sometimes I get I'll just a funny story that I tell quite often is you know sometimes a man will say to me, especially like when we're talking privately, he's like. Well, I just I just can't do it anymore. She's driving me crazy. You know, uh, I got to get out of here. You know, I want to get a divorce. You know, I don't know how to tell her this that. So I say, okay. In the private session, I'll say, okay, no problem, no problem. So I said, well, I have one criteria before I entertain that option, but we can definitely get there if that's what you want. So he says, well, what's the criteria? I said, well, tell me, how do you think your wife feels about you? Oh, she hates my guts. <laughs> she thinks I'm a jerk. She thinks I'm insensitive. She thinks that I'm, you know, uh, irresponsible. I said, okay, okay. So my only criteria before we talk about divorce, and I'll help you share this with your wife, no problem, and I can help you through that process. I said, I want that your wife, I want us to work on getting your wife to believe and to think and to feel that you are the best husband in the world. I want that when I ask her in six weeks from now how the marriage is going and how she feels about you, that she thinks that you are the best partner she could ever possibly have. I said, work with me on that. And at the end of six weeks or 12 weeks, after she tells me that you're the best husband she's ever had and she's totally in love with you and she can't believe how much you've changed, I said, if you want to go divorce... I promise you, I will walk you right through that process. No free of charge, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and I think, Mark, that's the same. That's the, very similar to what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. when when it, obviously it never happens because the second he changes and becomes that right. man, you know, his wife, he'd, he'd be never want to leave. You know, so so it's like I agree with you. Like if he ha- if he's still sit- sitting in a situation where his wife thinks he's a jerk, so to speak. He obviously hasn't learned what he needs to learn in this mm-hmm. process. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it, 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 um, it sounds very sly <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very honest, but it's you know, there's a method to your madness for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything kind of in in wrapping up? And one last thing you want to kind of leave us with today well 
you know, um, there's so many, you know, beautiful things we can say about a marriage. You know, one of the things that I like to express to my clients and to certainly people I share information with on Twitter is we have to reframe our whole mm -hmm. understanding of what marriage is. Oftentimes we think that, you know, we date somebody, we, we see them from afar, it's love at first sight, we date them, if you're lucky enough, we fall in love. And we want to take our marriage, we want to take our relationship to the next step. So obviously, the next step would be, you know, put a put a ring on it, you know, <laughs> you know, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the next step. And to me, as beautiful as that sounds, it's a setup for a lot of heartache. Because what people are missing when they look at dating and marriage in that in that fashion is they're missing the point that marriage is actually a completely different emotional experience and physical experience than dating and falling in love right mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people don't see it that they, they see they see marriage as an extension right. of dating right and i like to i like to explain to people that dating is just the 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 time that we go through the process that we go through to choose with whom we are going to then take on the journey and mission of marriage right it is not the pre-marriage it is not you know a kind of marriage no it is just the process that we use to select and to create a relationship with the person with whom mm -hmm. we will then go on a completely different mission. That is, is so marriage. smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the way you said that. Yeah. Well, David, just hang on a minute and let, let's wrap this up. I really appreciate, and I, you know, I don't know about you, but as a, as a married family therapist, I really work in isolation. I don't talk to other therapists. I don't visit right. with them. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. People always ask me, do you have anything, anybody you can refer me to? No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> you know, I'm. You're a lost cause. If I don't work, you're a lost cause. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I, well, and, and it's just that there is this kind of isolation, professional isolation. Yeah. Unless you force yourself to be involved in, in some group. And so to me, it's so refreshing uh, to hear what you're doing because it's, Thank you. you know, it's just like a new experience for me to, to get to hear somebody's viewpoint that's totally different than mine and then see how much, how many common threads there are underneath it all. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so it's really been likewise, enough. Likewise. I really appreciate, like I said to you before, and I've said this many times, you know, the depth of the insight that you bring to the clients on a personal level, mm -hmm. I can imagine that being extremely powerful and very effective. So I'm definitely going to pick up some of your stuff because that's really important. <laughs> to you. Well, you know, funny you should mention that. So before I go, I want to I want to just shamelessly uh, promote my books, uh, The Dance of the Lion and the Unicorn. It's a book I wrote about relationship, mastering thoughts. The book about the voice in your head, and awakening takes it all down kind of a mystical path. But anyway, Beautiful. yeah, they're all available on uh, Amazon in either paperback or uh, yeah. or uh, what are they Kindle Kindle format? Kindle, perfect. So thanks again for being with us today. And any I'm final okay. thoughts, Christina? I'm kind of springing it on you, aren't I? <laughs> I know. Um, there weren't any yet. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just, uh, I agree because hearing hearing both of you talk, it does seem like you share a lot, even though your execution is different. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, but, no, it's just... It's cool to to hear other therapists talk as well. I usually only talk to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go try to talk to a bunch of therapists. So it's, yeah. it's really cool and very worthy work. Um, so like I, I met Mark because my husband started using him. And after he was kind of reached his point of like, I got everything I needed out of this. Then, um, you know, several months later, I started talking to Mark a little bit more. So, um, but 
just just so helpful to, to bring back the appreciation element back into your marriage and to be accountable for what behaviors are you bringing in what actions are you doing and um my life is totally different than it's ever been and probably Wonder. the best that it's ever been and largely because of these types of principles so i'm just a big fan yeah it works <laughs> it works <laughs> I'm still um, married and I'm happy. So <laughs> there you, go. you still like your husband? <laughs> I like him more than ever. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> okay, we we got that on tape. We got that yep. on tape. <laughs> yeah, you can email him later if you want. <laughs> All right, David. Thanks so much for being our guest. My pleasure, of course. And Maybe we'll, we'll do this the... again. There's so many more topics we could talk about. I'd Absolutely. love it. Absolutely, that'd be great. <laughs> thanks so Wonderful. much. Of course. Right, signing off.